Hi guys, this is Dr. Hindu and I'm going to tell you about how to approach a slide. Uh, this video is mainly for residents and dermatologists who are interested in dermatopathology and clinical side of dermatology. Uh, if you happen to have a microscope with you and a slide with you, that will highlight how to go about it. There are four take home messages to you. The first is um, that uh, when you are uh, doing a biopsy, like for mainly for the residents, you must uh, hand over the report to the patients after you have seen the slide, after it has been reported and you have got the slide back. Uh, that is the only way you are going to learn it. And uh, if you are not uh, doing that, uh, later on after your residency, it's very difficult to uh, you know, learn dermatopathology as such. Uh, uh, then the second take home message is uh, while you are doing the biopsy, you must uh, fill the requisition form. And uh, so it, all the details has to be filled properly. Otherwise, you won't be getting a proper uh, report. Now I have a slide. Now I'll tell you how to go about this. So this we start with uh, the scanner view. Scanner means like here I'm starting with 4x. So this is your 4x and uh, 10x and in 4x I'm going to see the entire uh, section like these are the different sections in my uh, slide if you can make out. Once you're a scanner you are like able to identify the pattern and what is there and from which site it has been taken a lot of sebaceous glands face uh, the follicle in the subcute uh, scalp mucosa no granular so that way you can make out that which site is there where you can make out which pattern is there your 70 percent of differentials and diagnosis is made there so that is the most important thing in reviewing the slide and that is the drawback in most of the books what we have in dermatopathology they have the high power highest power clues and all they don't have this a scanner pictures a lot and they are not focused much on the patterns and the scanner pictures so that is the uh, biggest demerits in our books what I, I have got then the fourth point is you have to you know scan all the sections in the places where you have a little bit of confusion that this is there or that is there or uh, some clues you have to look for uh, so all the cases you must look all the slide, sections in a slide uh, uh, how you are going to see is on this screen the problem here is this screen is not showing the entire thing what I am seeing here is just reducing it to 50% but what I am telling you that I am seeing the entire section in one so now you can come closer and you can see the screen now this is take the full screen from there to there so this is my epidermis I am going top to below and uh, here is my dermis uh, so i can't see much of the infiltrate so, uh, i'll try to uh, note down the pattern so here it is you know superficial perivascular infiltrates okay and uh, in epidermis there are a lot of spaces out here so this is spongiosis so it's a spongiotic uh, with superficial perivascular infiltrates so you can see that uh, compact uh, stratum corneum is there uh, not much of para parakeratosis. Uh, here you can see spongiosis, a lot of spongiosis, and uh, there is uh, you know the infiltration of lymphocytes. Perivascular infiltrates are there. Mostly they are lymphocytes. They are circular cells. Lymphocytes, the plasma lymphocytic infiltrates. It's just a sponge, maybe eczema or spongiotic dermatitis. If you get eosinophil, that's uh, you know pretty good for you. The site of biopsy is abdomen. Uh, distribution is face, trunk, upper limb, and lower limbs. So they want erythroderma due to chronic plaque psoriasis or airborne contact dermatitis. Now, seeing this slide, I'll be giving as airborne contact dermatitis or any dermatitic disorders. But uh, when you say erythroderma, it's very difficult to differentiate psoriasis and airborne. So you need to tell them to repeat the biopsy from uh, plaque, you know. So, so that uh, differentiation detail I'm not going into. That's other topic. Uh, so this is how we approach a slide. Now I will show the other slide. You can see here from top to bottom. Okay. So this is your like uh, upper part that is epidermis and uh, going up to the subcute. The pattern here is somewhat 
the basement main brain is looking very okay demarcated but here there is some problem means the basement membrane is not cleared if the basement membrane is not clear means some interface is happening okay like anoid or vacular those are two types of interface but here is the interface so this slide in the scanner itself i have come to know that is the slide of some interface dermatitis which is the pattern here if i go to the higher part like this is the 10x and i look the area where i found the problem was and that area is here somewhere you know the basement membrane is not clear over here so this is interface dermatitis then i look at the other parts as well this is my stratum corneum this is 40x 40x is higher magnification and i'll scan the interface now from one end from one end to the other end so you can see the pigments so this the melanophages can be clearly seen over here see the pigment melanin pigments in the macrophages see these pink bodies in the upper dermis these are your colloid bodies or civet bodies which is seen not only in like in planus but interface dermatitis wherever it like in you can see this in le as well the colloid bodies okay after you have done this you make a differential that it can be a lichen planus because of the interface dermatitis it can be you know other interface dermatitis disorders like lupus erythematosus you can get so much of colloid bodies and interface even in the drug reaction so now i go to the details it stays violaceous flaks on the uh, you know body it's like since from one year and they want lichen planus and psoriasis so i think by now you are very much clear that what the diagnosis is is like in planus see we are at the scanner again we are seeing top heavy this is more like a band like um, covering the entire upper dermis below it's clear this is the hair follicle over here and again you know you'll go to the higher part you know that you have to scan the basal layer again from one end to other end the basement mem membrane is totally gone over here and uh, also in the epidermis there is uh, in the follicle there is perifollicular infiltrate and all so i go at the higher part at the same area and i can see the interface so it's very simple i'm telling you once you are in the habit of you know you visualizing the slides you become very much pro at least in the uh, common cases that is why i'm taking the common cases over here now this is another uh, this is the another slide for uh, the fourth take home message uh this is uh, the upper part the amelated uh, stratum corneum the hypoplastic pseudoepithelomatous epidermis and infiltrates are going again deep like superficial dense and nodular deep granulomatous pink uh, uh, center surrounded by blue area again here pink center surrounded by the giant cells are visible so uh, it's a granulomatous uh, superficial and deep nodular infiltrate pattern make out that there are mixed infiltrates it's a superative granulomatous disorder and it's almost hugging the epidermis as you can see even the granuloma is hugging the epidermis here you can see the granuloma so it's more of a tuberculoid granuloma with uh, abscess over here now uh, this kind of biopsy we see in lupus vulgaris and chromoblastomycosis and because we know that it can be seen in both and as we know that for chromo we know, we need uh, some clues like copper penny bodies and all so just seeing one section doesn't help and uh, now we'll go to the other section you know below as i come to this section and i try to swipe the slide you know the granuloma and giant cells and all i see here there is this copper penny body which is bilobed and it's not that uh, brown color but uh, yes 
it's seen here so this is how the diagnosis is made otherwise if you see one section and they want lupus vulgaris and uh, uh, you know chromoblastomycosis uh, uh, you can be biased so they want uh, here uh, there is 34 year old female and inverted plaque with central clearing on left wrist for uh, last 10 years and they want deep mycosis uh, lupus vulgaris and PKDL. So now you know that the diagnosis is chromoblastomycosis. Once you are clear in your ideas that how you have to approach them, you can at least uh, learn dermatopathology retrospectively from the slides because slides are the biggest uh, things that are going to teach you because every slide is different. The pathognomic thing what you see in the books, you're not going to get that in all the slides you are very much lucky nowadays that you have so many platforms where you can learn so if you are a resident and you're doing the biopsy just try to be in the contact with a pathologist and, and and be in the habit of discussing the case with him or her they're always there to help you if you have some doubt if you have some query that why it is this and why it is not or for academic purpose so you can always go for that so uh, you have books with you you have the slide patient everything so that is the best time you can learn it so these are my four take home messages for today so stay tuned thank you bye bye